three months after VJ Day, a unit of the Air Sea Rescue Service was flying a routine patrol somewhere over the South China Sea. Got a smoke, Pete? Yeah. There you go. The search message just came over, sir. Rover 7, life raft containing survivors sighted by C-47 at coordinates Able 60, Charlie 71. Proceed to coordinates, conduct search and rescue. Navigator, give you a course in ETA. Co-pilot to Navigator. How about that course in ETA on search order? Um, and this message from the tower is for you, sir. Susie landed here this afternoon, takes off. Susie landed here this afternoon, takes off at 1900. Did you hear that, Pete? Susie's at the base, came in this afternoon. Ah, oh, that's fine. I'd like to meet her. You will if we can get back by 7. Got that course in ETA? Yeah, 167 degrees ETA, 1630. Pilot to crew, man search stations. We're looking for a life raft containing survivors. Report all floating objects out. Come on, life raft, show up. I've got a date with my baby. How'd you meet Susie? Know her back home? Didn't I ever tell you? It was just a little over a year ago. I finished my 50th mission and got to leave. How about me, Lieutenant James Willis? I'm supposed to have a reservation. Lieutenant Willis? I'll have to double you up. 132 with Lieutenant Briscoe. Right. Sign here, please. Let's see if you got Lieutenant Holmes. Holmes? Gangway for Rip Van Winkle. Lieutenant Holmes? When did you make your reservation? Oh, I don't see the final. What a sack. Hey, Frisco, you got yourself a roommate. doing in my bed. You're, you're Lieutenant Briscoe? And that's how I met Susan. Yeah, yeah, but then what happened? She's my girl. I saw her a lot during that leave. I've only seen her twice since then. Yeah, but did you get another room? Ah, I was too tired. Yeah. What? She did. <laughs> Search to pilot, floating object at nine o'clock. Sure, sure. Give Susie my love. <whistles> Susie! <laughs> what a surprise. How'd you happen to land here? Picking up some passengers. I want you to meet Captain Dat and Jim Willis. Glad to know you. Alan's been stuck with me for the last three months. I'd say the shoe was on the other foot. What's all this talk about taking off in 1900? Well, we leave for Manila in exactly two hours. That doesn't give us much time, does it? You can spare for a while. Sure. Just get her back. She has a patient to take care of. Don't you worry. Oh, Lieutenant Briscoe, won't you join us? Yes, do. We're celebrating, you know. Thank you, but Captain Willis and I have a lot of talking to do in very little time. All right. We'll see you on the plane. Passengers, 
Yes, Mr. and Mrs. Hartley. They're flying out with us. I met them this afternoon in base operations. They seem a happy couple. The Japs held them in Singapore. They were married the day they were freed. I'll have a beer. Some black tea, please. Susie, why don't you stay here? Stay? You're going to be released anyhow as soon as you land in San Francisco. We could be married right here. Oh, Jim, you're kidding. I mean it. But why? You'll be out, too, in a couple of months. I want a big church wedding with a beautiful white gown and a train and mother weeping all over it. Now that you're here, I can't let you go. They can assign another nurse to take your patient across. That's awfully nice of you, Jim, but let's be practical. I'll go home and have everything all set by the time you get there. A couple of months, more or less. It'll be longer than a couple of months. But your letters... I thought that had all been arranged. It was supposed to be, honey, but... Well, I'm on sort of a spot. I promised the CEO I'd stick it out another year, maybe longer. Promised? Well, what about your promise to me? Now, don't blow up. This air sea rescue work's pretty important right now with all this ocean travel. But there are plenty of pilots to take your place. They're training men every day, Susie, but it's a big job. All right, if you're that important, you can stay, but not me. I've had enough of uniforms. I want to wear silk underwear and nylon stockings and open-toed shoes. Silly things, maybe, but I've been dreaming about them for years. I want out, Jim, and right now. Don't be stubborn. It isn't like being stuck here forever. I wouldn't be stuck here another day. Susie. Maybe you don't want to go home at all. Out here, you're a big shot. Back there, you'd be just another guy. Is that it, Jim? When you talk like that, I hardly know you. Maybe that's our trouble. Maybe we really don't know each other. We've only seen each other three times in our lives. Try and see things my way. Time to go, Jim. Time to shove off? Yes, you'd better ride in with us. Lieutenant Pinkert's on our plane. So I says to this guy, New York ain't America. Just because a guy comes from west of the Hudson River is <clears throat> no... Oh, you're back, sir. Did the lieutenant have a good time? You take care of the bags? Yes, sir. They were aboard. Good. Is the colonel ready? The colonel is ready and the sergeant's ready. Is the lieutenant ready, sir? Get the colonel. That's right. Colonel Yamura, Sergeant Blair. See Sergeant D'Agostino about your shoes. Right. Colonel? Sergeant, is that Jap traveling with us? Yes, ma'am. That's Colonel Yamura. They're going to try him in Manila for war crimes. Don't let it bother you, Mrs. Hartley. She has some rather unpleasant memories of them. I see. Well, they're trying 17 Jap officers, and Yamura, I understand, is a rather important witness. Otherwise, they'd probably have waited and sent him on another plane. Relax, dear. We'll just pretend he isn't there. Better get aboard. Well, you made it. Help Mr. Smith in, will you, Alan? It'll be too long now. We're off in one minute. So long, Captain. Good luck. Bye, Jim. No, Susie. You can fly back from Manila. Goodbye, Jim.
try to sleep, Mr. Smith. I can't. I can't sleep. Worrying about yourself again. You've got to stop. What good is it? I don't even know my own name. You can't tell. Your memory might come back all of a sudden. You never know from one day to the next what's going to happen. Take me. Four hours ago, I thought I had my life all mapped out. I was going to settle down and raise a half dozen kids. And bingo, the whole picture changed. I thought that guy looked like the world had suddenly collapsed. Eavesdropper? If you're unattached, a pilot named Danton might be available for a date in San Francisco. Thanks, Alan. Even if you're only kidding, it's good for a girl's morale. You just keep that date open. I have a headache. I wonder, do you have something for us? Oh, headaches are my specialty. Take two of these, then, if you still feel that... Oh, Alice! 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 Oh. What happened? Oh, she'll be all right in a minute. Here, try some of this. It's nothing, Rollin. Thank you. You'd better rest a minute. Oh, I'm fine. I'm sorry to be such a bother. It may be the altitude. I'll drop down to a more comfortable level. Danton was telling me about him. The Japs held him prisoner, too. Tortured him horribly, poor chap. It's amnesia. Can't remember a thing. Feeling better, dear? Oh, Rollin, hold me close. There, there, darling. It's just the reaction getting away after all you've been through. Got it, Alan? Roger. I'll take her down a bit. Lieutenant, why don't you grab some shut eye? I'll take the first watch. Okay, wake me up when you get tired. <sighs> Making this for my girl Joni back at Weehawken. It's a ring. Want to see a picture? Gorgeous, huh? Well, what's the matter? Am I disturbing your beauty sleep? I cannot sleep. I couldn't sleep either if I was you, knowing what's waiting for you in Manila. Would you, would you mind asking the nurse if I could have a cup of coffee? Yeah. Now, Lieutenant, can we have some coffee, please? Sure, coming right up. You know, I really can't stand coffee. I just take it to cure my insomnia. Thanks. Thank you. Maybe I can find a couple more customers. Talking about Java, I ain't had a good drink since I left Weehawken. Now, you take down a coffee yeah. and... <laughs> at once to a heading of 270 degrees. My orders are to go to Manila. You will change course 270 degrees. Suppose I refuse. This is a good plane, Yamura, but it can't fly without a pilot. 
You mean if I kill you, we crash. If you insist, that is how it will be. You see, I have no choice. If you take me to Manila, I die anyhow. It's all figured out. If you follow my instructions, you will put me down on an island where I will be safe. How'd he get that gun? He threw boiling coffee in my eyes. I knew we shouldn't have treated him like a gentleman. Captain! Uh, Captain! Answer me, Captain! Nothing else to be done. Answer me, Captain! Captain. What was that course? 270 degrees. Don't try to fool me. I'm familiar with navigation. Shoot. Tell him. Pilot to passengers. He says, lay off the door, you'll get yourselves killed. Tell the passengers to take their seats. There's nothing they can do right now. Where is this island you're heading for? I wouldn't want to run out of gas. Only four or five hours more. You have plenty of fuel.
Like that's all of us, Captain. Pinker! He's insane. Blair, get him aboard. Pull him up, I said. No. Let him drown. Pull him up. Is that an order, Lieutenant? That's an order. Yes, sir. I can do without splints that'll hold the break in place. It doesn't hurt nearly so much now. My chest. It's just bruised. Try to rest. Awfully sick to my stomach. You must have swallowed a lot of salt water. Here, try this. It'll take the salt taste away. Listen, everybody. In the first place, we mustn't get panicky. In a few hours, we'll be reported overdue at Manila, and they'll start a search. We were a couple hundred miles off course when we hit, weren't we, Captain? Yes, thanks to you, Mora. That'll make it harder to find us, but they will. Then what are we worrying about? That's the ticket. Meanwhile, we have enough emergency rations and water to last us a week, if we're careful. Divided seven ways, you mean? What do you mean, seven? There are eight of us. You don't expect us to share our rations with him? Yes, I do. You're crazy! Why didn't you let him drown? If you only knew what we'd suffered at their hands. And look what they've done to Mr. Smith. Bad enough having your Murrah aboard. Just a minute. Off the record, I might agree with you. But as officer in charge, I must side with Lieutenant Pinkett. That's rule book nonsense. I say get rid of him now, or we'll all regret it. Look, Hartley, if I get to Manila, I'm going to have your Murrah with me. Maybe you wouldn't understand, but I've got to. No, go ahead, split it seven ways. I'll share my ration with you. Lieutenant's getting awful brave, isn't he? That's enough, Sergeant. <coughs> Miss Prisco will take charge of the rations. One cup of water and two candies to each. Two candies? In my condition? You don't have to have them. OK, I'll force myself. Just like Mother used to make. Should be about here now. The islands we're trying for are about 600 miles southwest. 600 miles? Oh, I'm sure we'll be picked up before then, but we've got to be prepared for anything. We ought to reach the islands in a week, eight days at the most. What if we miss them? Miles of open sea beyond, but we won't miss. I'll steer by compass and stars. Each of us will take a four-hour watch at the steering wheel. But the wind shifts. Will we get off course? You just cooperate. Put your trust in the compass and the stars and me. All right, Miss Briscoe, you get up here and take the first watch. <coughs> Maybe if you remembered. Let's try. Tried, tried. Don't you remember where you've been? You must remember the Orient. Macau. Saigon. Hong Kong. Is the nurse here? Oh, yes, she's here. I know. Remember Jimmy Ashley? At the American consulate. You knew him. 
Jimmy Ashley. Yes, remember Jimmy? Always with a white carnation. Alice, why do you keep at him? Well, I, I thought if I helped you remember things, I, I might help him. It's foolish when the doctors couldn't. Do you think you know him? Oh, no. No, but well, he, he, he might have known people we know. Maybe he's never been in Hong Kong. They found him in a Jap prison on the mainland. Send help. It may have gone down within an hour or within six hours at this point. Navy units will cooperate in the search. Now, if any of you PBYs locate survivors and the sea looks too rough to make a landing, contact the B-17 with airborne lifeboat, which will be in the area. Navigators mark charts. We'll find her, Jim. Tighten the bandage. Here we are, Mr. Smith. A little more water for you. There. You're doing fine. Here's your ration. the stomach. Feels like it's on fire. <laughs> A little water will help. You know, these rations wouldn't be so bad if we had something to garnish them with. Like a steak, for instance. Nice work, Susie. I'm not doing that eye any good. Stop rubbing it. You'll only make it worse. Don't you worry about my eye. You just take care of my morale. Yeah, so be it. Taking advantage of a situation. Well, if you don't like it, you can get out and walk. <laughs> That's what I'd call a very fair proposition. <laughs> No use going out again tonight, Jim. They might show a flare. Anyway, you need some rest. I couldn't do that as long as there's a chance that she's still out there. Okay, pal. You don't have to go. You can knock off. Oh, nothing doing. Thanks. Grab yourself some chow. I'll have to get the permission from the CO before we take off again. Remember? 
remember not to rub your eyes in flames. Sure what, Susie? Here, hold this. Now hold these. Hold the oar like this. This way? That's it. Does that arm help? It helps me. Now watch the stars I show you and you'll keep us on course. Keep the southern cross on your left. And that big star, see the big yellow one with the little cluster next to it? Keep that over your right shoulder. For luck? For luck. You no, know, sitting in all this water ain't doing me any good. Afraid you get this pan hands? No, sir. It's the opposite. Bail, Blair. Oh, the pain must be terrible, Rollins. Stand the pain better than I can having him around. Oh, don't start that again. Just extra weight. Without him, we wouldn't ship so much water. And you. I can't understand you. That's enough, Hartley. Turns my stomach. Giving him food and water. If I were in charge, I'd toss him overboard quick. Then you believe that people who stand in your way should be eliminated. People who stand in the way of peace and happiness, yes. I'd wipe out every one of them. Then, Mr. Hartley, our philosophies are very much alike. Oh, hey, Rollins, please, no, Rollins. please, some singing. Nothing like some singing to make the world go round. That's a good idea, Blair. How about some choruses of all out the bow? Or is that too tempting a suggestion? No, no, a hymn. I remember when I used to sing in the choir back home. I'm sure you all knew it. Remember this, Mr. Smith? Rest in the Lord, O oh, weary, heavy laden. Look unto him, your ever-present God. Rest in the Lord, whose word is truth eternal. Leave all to him, whatever may be time. Rest in the Lord, and when your toil is over, when every storm and danger you have passed, Lo, he has said, whose word abideth ever, you shall receive his welcome home at last. Rest in the Lord, whose word abideth ever, you shall receive his welcome home at last. I understand your compulsion, Jim, but I also have my job to do. In your condition, you might lose a plane and a crew. I've got to go out again. In the morning. Try and get some sleep. Take a pill if you have to. Let Pete turn in, Colonel. Give me another co-pilot. I'll be okay. All right. But after this flight, you knock off. Yes, sir. This is Philip Thompson. You must remember me, Philip. But I was your wife, Philip. I am your wife. Alice, what are you saying? Is he Philip Thompson? Oh, it doesn't matter now. We're all gonna die anyway. I shot him. I saw them in the prison courtyard. The next morning, they brought me his papers and told me he was dead. Oh, I almost went mad trying to forget. 
finally, when I married Rollin, I thought I had forgotten. But now, no, Rollin, I'm his wife. And he doesn't remember me. Oh, what have I done to him? <laughs> It'll work out, Mrs. Hartley. Right now, we've got to keep alive till we're rescued. Gee, it's just like a book I once read. A guy gets lost at sea, see? They all think he's dead. His wife meets another fella. A nice guy. They get married and have children and everything. So what do you think? Years later, the first guy comes back. He looks in the window and sees his wife and her happy family. It's snowing outside. I think it was Christmas. Yeah, it must have been Christmas because the family is trimming the tree. So, the guy goes away. Forever. Enoch Ardner was or something. What a story. All right, Enoch, stop dreaming and watch that oar. You're off your course. Bear left more. Left, not right. Watch that star. Yes, sir. Back, Jim. It's just a touch of malaria. I've had it before. You're going to the hospital. Colonel, you're not going to... Sorry, Jim. I'm grounding you for your own good. You're not giving up the search, are you, Colonel? We'll be out again today. There isn't much hope, Jim. We've covered the whole course to Manila, and we haven't even sighted an oil slick. Come on. I'm going to personally tuck you into bed. I can't give it to you, Mara. Get off my leg! Why do you keep giving him water? Why don't you let him die? Why don't you tell him, Lieutenant? Tell him why you have to deliver your Mara even if it kills you. Yes, why? Why? All right, I'll tell you why it'll stop your eternal bickery. We were cleaning out a nest of Japs on late. Three men, buddies of Blair's, under my command. I was supposed to be covering them with a Tommy gun while they went ahead. Well, suddenly the place was alive with Japs. We'd been ambushed. I signaled to the men to withdraw and and we fell back, but they didn't make it. Well, maybe it was my fault. Maybe if I'd been more alert, they'd be alive. Blair knew it. The whole outfit knew it. To them, it looked like I was yellow. Nothing like that. He's getting out. But not me. I'm trying to make the regular army, and I've got to live that down. That's why I have to deliver you, Mora. It's my orders, and I'm not falling down this time, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Ease up, Lieutenant. When things like that happen in a war.
Alice. He's been calm all night. He couldn't have fallen overboard. You were on watch, Hartley. What happened? I must have gone to sleep. You don't think... You don't think I did it. But he couldn't have fallen overboard. But I went to sleep. He was there. Just a little while ago. He was there. And what happened to him, Rollins? What happened to him? I don't know, Alice. I just don't know. Don't look at me like that. I couldn't help it. I fell asleep. How convenient, Mr. Hartley. When someone stands in the way of peace and happiness, he must be eliminated. Isn't that our philosophy? I'll kill you for that! Stop it, Hartley! Sit down, everybody! Sit down, you timbers! Pinker, Claire, you more and you hardly get on opposite ends of the other side, and when I get the word, push up hard. All right, Susie and Mrs. Hartley, uh, just watch yourself when she comes over, so you won't be hit. All right, now you there, shout! Good. Now get aboard. Sail and oars are gone. That's just fine. Joni's ring I was making, it's gone. Your ring? The water and rations are gone. I tried to tell you, the only way we'll come through this alive is to work together. You just couldn't get that through your heads. Some people have to learn the hard way. I went crazy. My leg and Smith didn't know what I was doing. We're done for it, it's, all, it's my fault. Lay off that, Hartley. We've lost our supplies, yes. But plenty of men have survived on the sea for weeks with less than we have. But they've used their brains and they've worked together, not against each other. From here on, if anybody makes trouble, he's going to be tied up. But what can we do? We have no food or water. We can live for days without food if we only have guts. Can we keep on course, Captain? You mean without an oar? You bet we can. I'll rig a rudder with these lines and... And Yamora's coat. We'll keep on course, and we'll make those islands. Just keep your heads. You make me believe it, Alan. I don't know where we'd be without you. Well, stick close to me, Susie. Right now, I, I don't know whether I believe it myself. We'll be found. How do you know? I just know it. Oh, it better be soon, Susie. Oh, Alan. The pain must be horrible. I could have stood anything. I saw the doubt in your eyes. Oh, I, I didn't doubt you, Rollin. It was just the shock of him being gone. It, well, I didn't know what to think. I can stand. If you'll just forgive me for being such a fool. Oh. Look! He must have meant it as a message. Rest in the Lord. You shall receive his welcome home at last. Oh, he left a message, Rollin. Poor fellow. No one can suspect you now. 
His mind couldn't stand the strain, not knowing. Alan, don't you think we ought to say a little prayer for Mr. Smith? Yeah. Better ask for some rain, too, Susie. Pinkett's pretty sick. Oh, Lord, who knows the sick and tormented minds of men? Help thy servant to find the peace and rest he knew not here. And help us, O oh Lord, to reach a safe harbor and guide those who seek us. And send rain that thy suffering ones may be relieved. Free our hearts of jealousies and hatreds. Cleanse us of fears and suspicions. And give us courage to face our ordeal and to be worthy of thy wisdom and benediction. Amen. 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 Gee, that was good. I feel better already. We've sprung a leak. Wake up, everybody, wake up. We've sprung a leak. Each of you take a section. Hurry. Here it is. I got it right over here. The water line. <laughs> Keep your position. You'll tip us over. Hey, this is just like in a book I once read about this little Dutch kid who stuck his finger in a dike and saved Holland. Now, this kid was very small. Oh, stop yapping. We've got to stop that leak. What can we use? Chewing gum. Well, fellas, I was going to share it with everybody honest. I was just saving it for a rainy day. Well, this is it. Here, chew it quickly. I'm sorry, we've got to have it back. Here, plug it up. It's funny. This gum can save our lives. When I think of all the gobs of gum resting on the movie house seat at this very minute, it kind of makes me sad. Look out, Blair! Shout! Ah! 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 Pretty deep. You've got to stop the bleeding. I'll need some bandage. Pinkard, look in those pockets again and see if you can't find something we can use. Nothing but this fishing line of mirror. Ben? Say. You get a purple heart for shark bite? How do you feel? Wonderful. You better save your worry about that gum. Is it gonna hold or ain't it? Fever hasn't broken, huh? No word. You haven't given up. We've covered the whole course three times. That's finished. They've quit. The CO's done everything humanly possible. I know. If only I didn't have to lie here, helpless. Well, you better take it easy, fella. You're sick. 
I gotta go. I'll see you later. Sun blindness. What if we drift off course? We won't. But you'll have to be my eyes. Oh, well. Easy now, Lieutenant. Just sit there and see that I keep the sun pointing at my right shoulder. I've been watching you for Oh, Captain Sark. Yes? Do you think they're gonna do all those things with radar they've been talking about? What things? Practically everything. Maybe even making love by radar. Wouldn't that be something? Imagine. I'm here and Joni's in Weehawken and I'm kissing her by radar. Some world, huh? You're okay, Blair. Just hold that thought. I wish the lieutenant thought it was okay. But I can't blame him. I gave him a rough deal. That's all right, Blair. How do you feel? I feel better if you'd shake my hand, sir. It's funny how you can get a guy all wrong. No guy with a streak would have jumped in the way you did to save me, knowing there was a man-eating shark around. Forget it, Blair. I hope that rotten shark gets a good case of ptomaine. About time for my watch. Give me a hand, will you, Captain? What's the matter, Captain? He can't see. He's blind. It's only sun blindness, just temporary. But if you can't see, how can you navigate? We'll never reach those islands. Calm down. I've got the stars in my head like a chart. You all know the course by this time. Drift off, I'll lay it out again. Lieutenant Frisco can pick out the stars. We'll make it. No, he won't. Why do we go on like this? Uh, we still got two chances. Either they find us, or we still got two chances. Either the islands will be inhabited, or they won't. No, we we're all going to die on this raft. Why do we keep torturing ourselves? Why don't we go overboard and not fight me? <laughs> Grab her, Hartley. Hold her down. We haven't got a chance, and you know it. Everybody's sick or wounded, and now the captain's flying. No, we're all going to die on this raft. <laughs> we're going to get some water anyway. Yeah, maybe more than we can handle. Looks like a storm. Hey, sir, open the pockets in the raft to catch the rain. The rest of you help me bail.
Go away. Jim. Jim, what are you doing out of bed? Pete, you gotta help me. I wanna make one last search. You're crazy, you're sick. Anyway, what chances Call are... Call it a hunch. Call it anything you want. But I've got a feeling they're out there somewhere alive. Yeah, but we've searched. On the course to Manila. I want to try off course. I've got to follow my hunch, Pete. Seal's gonna chew us up for this. I'll have to take that chance. You get a crew out and clear the tower. Don't tell them I'm aboard. Throw me in my pants. Thanks. Jim. The moon's coming up. Yeah, yeah, that's a break. That was good hunting, boy. Mocha Tower to Rover 1-2. Message for Lieutenant Sturdivant. Uh-oh. Go ahead, Tower. This is Lieutenant Sturdivant. You file Lieutenant Desser as co-pilot. Desser just walked in here. Who is your co-pilot? Captain James Willis. Captain Willis? He's supposed to be grounded. You better return to the field at once. I didn't hear a thing. That gadget's dead. Got enough fuel to get home. the raft dead ahead. We're going to buzz it at 200 feet. Prepare to drop smoke float. Roger. Navigator, check wind direction from smoke float after we buzz the raft. Then stand by for lifeboat salvo. Stand by with that smoke float. Let it go. Navigator, course 195, altitude 1200, 1200, speed 120, it's all yours. Roger, stand by for boat salvo. A little to the right, easy. Left a little. Hold it. Boats away. of life. You'd think they'd try to get the boat. They all can't be dead. Must be something wrong. 
There's plenty wrong. They're not even trying for the boat. Either they're all dead or too weak to try to make it. Pete, I'm going down to help. You can't do a jump into that water. You're sick yourself. Let me handle it. This is my job. Another day. Susie, Susie, where are you? I'll be right with you, Alan. Sun blindness. We'd better get him into the boat. Help Mrs. Hartley first. Go on in, Pete. Get that PBY out here pronto. These people can't stand the trip back in the boat. They need medical attention right now. Roger, be seeing you. Here's some hot bouillon for you, Alan. I'll be out to pick us up soon. We've still got some patients to take care of. I don't know how we'd ever come through it without him. Funny how little you appreciate people till you're thrown close together with him. I guess he's a pretty swell guy. You bet he is. Pretty swell guy. Don't worry. He'll be okay.
That's a rough sea to take off in. Hit one of those waves and you could crack up. We don't take off that way. Air Sea Rescue has one more trick up his sleeve. job over in Guam. Just got back. How's everything? Fine, fine. You leaving? Do out in a few minutes. So you're finally delivering your prisoner? Yeah, he's waiting on the plane. And this time there won't be any slip-ups. Good deal. Say, uh, Lieutenant Briscoe's still here? Just left her in Blair's room at the hospital. You better hurry. Captain Danton's flying out with us. I better say goodbye. How's his eyes okay? Ship shape. Good. See you later. So long, Jim. Hello. Captain! Hello, Blair. Hello. Welcome back, Captain. About time you came to see the cripples. Cripples? You're all getting fat. <laughs> huh, it's a great life. If you're looking for Lieutenant Briscoe, she just went out to the plane with Captain Danton. Oh, I don't want to miss him. See you later. Thanks, Susie. And goodbye. Take care of yourself. Susie. Hello, Jim. Hey, they're taking off. That's right. Aren't you going with him? No. For the love of my Jim, say something. Don't you want me to stay? I'm going to feel like an awful fool if you don't. Finally, he gets wise. He goes to her. He grabs her in his manly arms. They embrace. They kiss. Gee, it's just like I once read. 